It was awesome to hang out with the grandkids, though. Good Friday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and thank you kindly for joining us on the I Love Seville Show. It's a pleasure to connect with you guys on the last day of the business week for the I Love Seville Network. So much to cover, ladies and gentlemen, on this fine and fair talk show. Real estate and development and economic news has been significant this week in the greater Charlottesville metropolitan area. We have Keith Smith fresh from a trip to Phoenix. Um, was not here this past Friday. Neil Williamson had his Thanks, um, his seat and did a hell of a job. We covered some of that news with Neil on Friday, and even more broke this week, including what we reported first in the market: Afton Scientific, a two hundred million dollar investment in a biotech firm right over the city line down Avon Extended, two hundred jobs, six figure jobs. Folks new to the area, giddy up and get ready. Judah Wickhauer behind the camera. We thank Yes Realty Partners for being a part of the show. Interstate Service Company, a home's best friend. Woody Fincham of Fincham & Associates, Charlottesville Settlement Company. We have Mexicale Restaurant and Pearl Certification, the Free Enterprise Forum, the best of the best when it comes to real estate. Judah Wickhauer, studio camera, and, and a stranger is back in the saddle. Keith Smith, good Friday morning. You mean I'm strange? No, I haven't seen you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome that. back. I know that. It's, uh, you know, it's a, um, it was a good thing, man. We went and, and attended two conferences out in Phoenix at 115 degrees. So where you guys were unfortunately dealing with a hurricane, we were at 115 yeah. We just had degrees. some rain here. No big deal. Yep. And um, got to hang out with grandkids and daughters. We were blessed to bring them there. Went to the Grand Canyon, my first, first time there. If anybody's never been there, you should do it. This is, it's unbelievable. And then we went to go visit family in, Fe in uh, Santa Fe. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. But traveling these days are a bit complicated. Yeah. Uh, a one-day trip turned into two days. And uh, we got back at zero dark 30 this morning. So, um, you know, uh, if I'm a little peaked, <laughs> it's because I haven't quite woke up yet. Well, it's good uh, to see you. It's good to see you. Yeah. So I did a quick slide as we were sitting in, and we can kick off the show a little bit about this. You know, we like to do, uh, on Real Talk with Keith Smith, we like to do the end of the month. You know, we're, we're running succession months, so we're up to nine months. And I just took a quick look at it. So that'll be slide one, if you don't mind, Judah. Judah's going to put it on screen in a mere five seconds. And ladies and gentlemen, look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen. Data, we love it. Keith Smith, the show is yours. Yeah, so... I put some percentages on it because this has been a big, big, big drop. So we are 17% below the sales volume of 2016. I've been asked all the time, why don't I go further back? It's because between 2014 and 15, car switched from one aggregator, one MLS company to another, and the data is not as reliable from my perspective going back. So we're 17% below, but we're up. 75% in sales price. So we've jumped 75% since 2016 to now. Unbelievable. But, but I, I put a little, if you take a look. You hear that, Judah? From two, 2016 to 2024, eight years, 75% increase in median values in the car footprint. 75%, Judah. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look, hey, Judah, how you doing? Hello. Hi. Good to see you, brother. Uh, if you take a look at the, the yellow line, that little peak is... is I want to slide the microphone in front of you so viewers and <laughs> listeners can actually hear what you're saying there. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Hello, Judah. Hello. How are you? <laughs> hello. 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 You know, uh, that sounds like a Three Stooges skit right there. Hello. Cully back at the Real Estate Developer. Kevin Sullivan, welcome to the broadcast. Carly Wagner, welcome to the broadcast. Christelle and Lake Monticello, welcome to the broadcast. Juan Sarmiento, Kevin Yancey. You got two supervisors, one counselor, Ellie Tucker, Andre Xavier, Spencer Pushart, Rob Neal, who's in commercial real estate, the who's who of real estate, Stephanie Wells Rhodes, watching the program. So remotely, I, I attended the Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission meeting yesterday as we were traveling, and I actually shared with them some of the slides uh, from our last month's analysis where I broke it down by jurisdiction, which um, 
I hope it, they enjoyed it. But take, if you go back to slide one, the unicorn years, you see that little poke right there of uh, 2021? We had 3,557 uh, transactions. That's Massive. a 37% 30, jump from where we are today. So we, we sold 37% more homes in 2021 than we did in 2024 on it. But we did on a price, on a price jump, we've jumped up uh, 28%. So we've jumped 28% in price, but we've reduced roughly 37% in volume. If you could just take a look at that, the way it ramped up and ramped down, it kind of tells you everything you need to know about the market. The other thing How's the I, industry holding up? Well, it's funny you should... How's the industry holding up over it's there? It's funny you should say that. We're at uh, eight-year lows when it comes to inventory. Now, you can make the argument that some agents are uh, doing transactions that are at the highest clip in the history of car. So You're talking about the highest dollar value. Highest dollar value. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, so, I, for the heck of it, yeah. I haven't got a chance to make a slide. Okay. When I was sitting around an airport... I was running, okay, what's the sales volumes look like? This is right up your alley, Logan Wells, Kalela. We have three firms watching the program. I'll highlight the agents watching. Keith, people have been missing you, man. I got to get my coffee to kick Keep in. going. <laughs> you got a lot of folks watching. So uh, I've got a little handwritten notes on here, guys. So you're going to okay. have to be careful, uh, cautious, uh, cautious um, patient with me. Only a couple hours worth of sleep here. So that's how much I love you, Jerry. We... From zero, we got 1,085 agents in cars. So let's, let's quantify this, right? Okay. So these are agents that are board and MLS members, right? Currently, right now? As, it, as of last night, when I looked at the register, we were 1,085 car board and MLS members. Now, we want to quantify that number a little bit. There's some folks in that... Uh, that 1,085 are, let's say, brokerage, brokers of firms that really don't generate sales. They're just brokers, brokers of firms. So, but the number's awfully close. Okay. 100 and, 185. 1,085. 1,085, yeah. right. So would you want to gander between zero and one, how many agents did that cover? So in other words, between zero and one transact, thank you for that. Yeah, that okay, look was, what the hell you're talking good about. Talk about here. Thank you. Yeah. For, that have done between zero and one transact. Half of them. Uh, not quite. A little, uh, actually, What's the number? Uh, 443, it's roughly 41%. So 443 car. Year to date. Board and MLS members. Correct. Have done between zero and one transaction. Now, keep in mind, some of those zeros are brokers of firms that don't do transactions, but they are members. But that number is not a, a large amount. 443 card board and MLS members have done between zero and one transactions. How many Correct. have done zero? Uh, that I didn't break out. I just okay. did between zero, zero and one. Okay. No, no, I tell you what, somebody can do the math. 177 done one transaction. Okay, so 443. Subtract 177. 443 minus 177? Yeah. 266 have done zero transactions. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to keep on saying there's zero. There's, you know, maybe 10% of that are brokerages or folks that are, are uh, running brokerages. 226 car board and MLS members have so done I, zero transactions. So I like, I like to do um, So 177 have done one. 177 have done one. You combine the zero and one, that's 41%. Two transactions. Hold on one second. I'm putting this down. This is fantastic. Um, zero to one transactions is what percentage? 41%. It's 41% of the 443. Car. 41% of car has done zero to one transaction. Okay, now, let, let me tell you some of, so Let me stop there for a second. Um, the data that we learned in Phoenix, so in, in cars, the Fence, we're outperforming the country on a whole. Oh, yeah, but this is not sustainable. It's for, this is it, not it, sustainable it, here. It, well, wait until the rest of the numbers. Yeah, this is not sustainable. Two transactions. Okay, two transactions. How many? 99, which is 9%. 99 car board and MLS members have done two transactions as of 10 4. Three transactions. Hold on one second. Uh, and you said that's which percent? 
I rounded it down, so it's 9%. It's a little over 9%, but let's call it 9%. Okay. Uh, what is it? 99 at 9%. 9% of the total 1,085. Okay. Three transactions. Okay, hold on one second. I'm writing this down. This is fantastic. This I should have done a slide. I'm sorry, guys. I just ran out of time. Okay. Uh, three transactions. How many? 54. That's 5%. Three transactions is uh, 54 members, and that's which percent? 5%. Okay. Four transactions are 45. 45 that's, members. That's 4%. 4%. Okay. Five transactions is 26. Five transactions is 26 that's members. 2.5%. 2.5%. Okay. Five is an important number. Okay, five. Does that mean you could start making a living doing this? What's the what's the what do you what's what's the take on five? So I've got to artfully choose my words here. Okay, yeah. Because right. uh, at five, he's basically saying five is the threshold where you're not uh, in on, on a median with a can or a hat in your hand asking for loose change. Well, it's very interesting. So one of the things, the reason I did this work. Um, one of the things we learned in Phoenix was from, this was a national stat, somewhere between 30, I didn't bring my actual notes with me, but it's around 30 to 40% of the total real estate agents in the United States are having trouble making their car payments, <coughs> yeah, yeah. having trouble making their mortgage payments. I would imagine that. Right. And the reason why five is so important, it's not necessarily a volume thing. So it's really difficult, right? So if I do five $2 million transactions, that equals one number, right, obviously. If I do five $200,000 transactions, it equals something else. But the reason that five is an important number to pull, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a level of professionalism. So that's what this whole conferences we worked at was about leadership and professionalism and coaching and mentoring other agents in the industry. <coughs> so it's kind of like anything, right? You know, if it, it, you know, I'm on show 700 and something, right? We're, we're approaching 800. You got this down, yeah. My, that's exactly the yeah. point. So, so I'm trying to artfully do this it's without- It's not your first rodeo. It's just, so when you do like five transactions a year- You start knowing what's up. Your level of professionalism is, is, is kind of there because you're doing stuff. As far as making money goes- Yeah. I think that number is closer to the eight to ten transactions, okay. right? So if you just wanted to, so what's the six transactions? Thirty-eight, thirty-eight. Six at, transactions. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight members have 3 done point, three point five percent. Is this year to date? This is year to date. So three point five percent. Year to date. Uh, seven okay. is twenty-six percent. Okay, hold on one second. Seven transactions. This is fantastic. Seven transactions is how many members? 26%. 26 two, members? 26 members. And which percent is that? Uh, 2%. Two point, it's, it, I'm rounding them down, so 2%. 2%, okay. Eight is 27 at 2.5%. Okay. Eight transactions is how many? 27 at 2.5%. 27 members, 2.5%. Okay. Nine is 23 at... 23 members. 5%. Okay. okay. So then... Um, what I did is I wanted to see what I broke out a range between 10 to 15 transactions. Okay. That's so the point. next category is 10 to 15 transactions. Correct. Okay. 53. Which 53 is members. Which is 5%. Okay. 15 to 20. 15 to 20. Got it. 42 at 4%. All right. 42 members. And 20, at which percent is 4? 42? 4%. Right. Okay. Right down. 20 plus or 32 or roughly 3%. 20 plus transactions is 32 members yeah. at 3%. I'll give this back to you, okay? So the viewers and listeners are on the same page. Keith has done statistics year to date, 2024, January 1 until what, 3rd of October? Until, until uh, the 3rd of October. The 3rd of October. Mm -hmm. We have a total of 1,085 car board members. Board and MLS. Board and MLS That's members. important. Board and MLS members, 177 of that 1,085 car board and MLS members have done one transaction. Let me start at the bottom. 266 of the 1,085 have done zero transactions. Mm -hmm. But quantify that. 
Zero includes bo bo uh, brokers and so forth and so on. So yeah. that, that number is a little, it's got baked in. But it's pretty darn close. It's about 10%. Pretty darn close. 177 have done one transaction. Mm -hmm. So you add those two together, it's 443 at 41%. So 41%. 41% of car board and MLS members, 41% have done zero or one transaction. Correct. And what are they paying in fees each year? Dues, access, fees? Uh, you would have to ask me that. All the above? Yeah, it's about 1200 bucks to be a member. And then I, I honestly can't remember what my quarterly MLS dues is. I should know it, but I just pay it. So um, I, Roughly? I, um, I can tell you exactly. Carly, you know that number? She Agents does. watching the program? She probably does. Let us know. Agents watching the program, let us know what that number is. Put it in the feed. I'll relay it live just, on air. I just write checks. You have checks. a boatload of firms watching here. I just write checks. Okay, Neil Williamson, welcome to the program. Hey, this Neil. is not sustainable what's happening here. No, it's... It, it's this it's, is not sustainable. This is, we, we are doing business economics 101 right yeah, here. Ladies yeah, and so my, so my, my number is a little, a little different because I... Um, I do um, commercial on top oh, yeah. of it, which is 160 a quarter. So I, I, I probably pay about 500 bucks a quarter. I'd have to go ahead and look at it. But somebody else probably knows this a lot more than I do. Hold on a second. 100, I, I'm way off. It's uh, blah, 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 courtesy. 90, 117, 160, uh, blah, blah. Let's see. Let me, I'm looking at what I'm getting paid here. So seven, eleven. All right. While he's doing that live on air here, I'll give yeah. some more of the statistics. It's, it's rough, roughly three fifty to three seventy five a quarter. Three fifty on top to of the twelve hundred, whatever it is. So I'll use the number three fifty. Seven hundred is half a year. Fourteen hundred is. So you're looking at twenty six hundred dollars. Yeah, but we also donate to our pack. Twenty six hundred dollars. Yeah. Someone that's doing zero to one transactions yeah. not donating to our yeah, pack. That's exactly right. Okay. Twenty six hundred dollars. 41% of CAR is doing between but, zero but, and one transactions. In fact... But that's not a... That, that's not a... That's just... A, I understand that's the norm, but eventually people no, no. are going to say, what am I doing here? Okay, Jonas Smith. I mean, eventually people are going to be like, my credit cards are out of control. Why I'm not my, making my mortgage payment. I'm not my making my car payment. I need to cut back on what I'm spending. Why does my family don't, don't let me finish... My sense. Well, I mean, this is just common sense here. <laughs> but my point I was going to make is that's just pittance of what it costs to run your business, oh, right? A hundred percent. Right, and that's the point I'm trying to make is that these people are also paying for marketing collateral. They're paying for headshots. They're paying for their cell phone. They're paying gasoline. They're paying wear and tear on their car. They're paying for their. I mean, their time of meeting with people, business cards, letterhead, flyers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, good Lord. Yeah. So, I, you know, it was a very interesting conference. So, you know, everybody, of course, is um, the big news cycle is the, you know, the whole law, the settlement, right? The reality of it, the reality of it is it's a money thing. And you're going to see it, and I'm going to still stick through this. I don't think you're going to see it this year because most people just paid their dues because of the way the cycle hit in October. I think you're going to start seeing numbers decrease because when you're 17% below where you were in 2016 in volume, 37% below. So everybody who came in in the business in 21, we're 37%. I think when we're done with the end of the year, that number is going to be north of 40. Gary Palmer, jump in the conversation. Welcome to the broadcast. So you're going to have 40, roughly 40% 40 less sales by the end of this year versus the peak of the year when everybody was getting in. So the run-up, if you look at slide one, if you look at the run-up... Slide one back on screen. Thank you, Judah. The slide up, the run-up from 20 to 21, right, the volume of sales went from 3,027 to 3,500, roughly. Then dropped back down to roughly 3,000. So it went up in 21 and hit exactly where it was in... Uh, 20 versus 22. And that's when everybody started getting in, right? And this conference was talking about that and how do you coach and mentor folks that got into the three, when there was 3,557 transactions and now there's roughly a thousand less. There's 
2,200, a little bit more. 2,254. Dude, dude, there's way more than 1,000 less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about 1,200. We're talking 1,300 yeah, less. Yeah. So, you know, we're the talking a third less transactions. Yeah. So, how do you coach and mentor people in the business to stay motivated and stay engaged and, and change their business model? But the, 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 vacation the vacating of agents is really not about now i got to talk about my buyer broker compensation it's we're 1300 sales less than we were in the peak of 21 we're 17 percent below where we were in 2016 now i get it our sales volumes have gone up right but the math just doesn't balance out and eventually there's going to be kind of a a, a reset in it Oh. Fantastic data from Smith here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I let me see something. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything on my handy dandy red little note cards. So I want to put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. Eight transactions. Twenty-seven members have done eight transactions year to date. Nine transactions. Twenty-three members have done nine transactions. The ten to fifteen transaction category. Fifty-three members have done that. The 15 to 20 transaction category, 42 members have done that. And the 20 plus transaction category, 32 members have done that. I remember when I bought my first place as a very mischievous uh, mid 20 year old, Tommy Brannick was the guy that was driving, whisking me around in his Tahoe at the time. Actually, Tommy had a Jeep Grand Cherokee at the time that he was whisking us around. And he said something that still resonates with me today. 10% of the agents do 90% of the business. You can make an argument here that that 10% of the agents doing 90% of the business is probably more like 9 or 8% of the agents well, I was doing actually, 90% of the business. So I actually was going to do a little math for you right now where you were talking just to pick 8% of... 8% of the agents in car. No, 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 no. Uh, eight transactions, I'm sorry. Eight transactions is 2.5%, 27 members. No, what I'm doing is eight and up. Okay, eight and up. Yeah, oh, I would love to do that. Eight and up, how many? Eight and up is 16%. 16% of the agents in car have done eight transactions or more. Mm -hmm. Eight. Let me double check this. Yep. Eight, eight and up is 177 agents. Let's see what 10. Here's a, here's a very straightforward question for you. Are you ready for this one? I am, sir. I'll it's listen to you. no secret that real estate professionals... Realtors, a large share of them are 55 plus. 57. I think our average age is 57. Average age is 57 years old. I would expect with the average. I beat that average. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> I would expect with the average of 57 plus years old, you are going to start seeing, especially with the changes in the industry, retirement become a yeah. very real reality for many in this profession. So Ten. I'm curious to see how retirement impacts this. I'm also curious to see this. Are you ready for this one? I'm listening. How many agents will choose a path of not having these professional membership dues well, and so saying, I'm not going to pay these dues. Yeah. I want the MLS access, not the other stuff, which keeps my overhead lower, which keeps them in the game longer. Well, at the moment, you have to. In order to get MLS access, you have but, to be part of the trifecta. But that's changing quickly. I, I would suspect. I mean, come on. Yeah, and I'm, if there's anything that's uh, I'm trying the whole antitrust thing I, I, is trying you to have to be a part of these organizations to get a part of the MLS. That I'm, ain't fair. Uh, that ain't fair. Uh, equal, what's it called? With the, uh, with the uh, business practices. Yeah, it's fair and equitable. But, so I'm trying to awfully use the words. I know thank, you are. Thank you, for, pull, thank you yeah. for, for bringing me along here because of these conferences and the CEO's event, we're a little privy to some, let's say, martini conversation. Okay, I'm with you. Uh, I think this time next year, you're going to see that trifecta requirement go away. Of course. Um, I think it's moving a lot faster than everybody thinks it's going to move. Um, uh, Alabama's on his way of doing it. Um, RE Colorado got sold to a private company. Bright is taking over a large percentage of, of the 
country in different Certainly sections. Certainly the Commonwealth. Certainly yep. the Commonwealth. Again, I'm, I'm privy to some conversations of confidentiality yeah. that, that I need, need to keep that way. But for those agents who are watching, this pendulum is going to start swinging. Uh, you're going to start seeing, I think, the, the, the breakup of the trifecta requirement. I think ultimately where it's going to land is you're going to get a choice, right? I think it's going to be a la carte that you can get to pick which one you want to do. That's my opinion. This is not going to be very popular, um, and it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. The room was kind of split down the middle about should clear cooperation stay or go. My vote... It's regardless if I think it's good or bad, I think it's going. I think DOJ is going to make it happen. A uh, very interesting uh, thing when I was at the CEO event, um, uh, the CEO from NAR wasn't there, but DOJ was in the room. There was DOJ lawyers in the room. And you can always tell a lawyer. Of course. They kind of squeak when they uh, <laughs> You can tell. <laughs> There's lawyers watching the program. Okay. You can tell by the and attire. The, and I'll tell you. Any you can law- tell by the attire. And I... Well, we were all in suits and ties, so you, you couldn't tell. Yeah, well, the type of suit. But most attorneys I know the type go, of suit. Most attorneys I know go, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> we squeak when we walk. So you can tell. They were kind of the uptight, uptight guys and, and gals in the room. Always but, can tell in a lawyer. Always can tell an engineer. And they were, absolutely, yeah. And they were, um, they were having a lot of one-on-one conversations with very important people in our industry. So, uh, you know, I think these two big things. Okay, so at that clip, the MLS dues are three fifty a quarter, seven hundred a six, fourteen hundred a year. That cuts pretty much the yearly uh, overhead, at least from a dues and membership standpoint, in half. And then you have the average age of a realtor nationally is fifty-seven and a half. Uh, no, I think for cars, fifty-seven. Fifty-seven point five. So Neil, whoever's watching, Neil's confirm, watching right now. Confirm, I believe. So you're telling me this. But look, you're I, telling I, me this. Hold on one second. Because I, I want to jump in because because I think these is what I'm what I'm saying is is what I think is going to happen here. And I called the settlement a year ago. I'm I'm calling this trifecta, and it's but it's going to be an option. These associations. I just want to get this out there. Actually, do really good stuff. No, no, no. Right. I, I get that. And and. and and, and have, you know, everybody remember this. Let, go back to, I, I just want to do a plug here. To go back to slide one, right? So, you know, the unicorn years was AKA. Um, Turkeys uh, could fly in the wind. Wise person told me that. Eh. Very wise person. <laughs> Mr. Smith. Um, Yona. But, but I want to I take it a different way. That was. Um, Gary Palmer giving props to the program. Want to hear you. it? That was you co- guys are six to 12 months ahead of where this market is going. Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah, thank you. From yeah. Gary Palmer. Yeah, well. Gary Palmer's a pro's pro. I, uh, Would you say that? Yeah, very much so. I, the dude knows what's up. Yeah, yeah, well, he, we come from the same background. Yeah. Right? And, and we look at things more from a business perspective. Well, no, no, no. I was, I was literally, God, this is so creepy. I was literally going to say Keith Smith and Gary Palmer are businessmen that happen to be realtors. So you guys are businessmen that happen to be realtors. There's so, a lot of realtors that are learning business. You guys have business, and then you're realtors. So here's my takeaway from the three conferences that we attended. Right, everybody in that room were business owners. They thought like business owners. They, you know, they function. That's how we think. Their real estate business as a business. Right. There was a fourth one that we attended which was more sales oriented, right? It was more salesperson oriented. And it was, that was the big takeaway. As we were hiking around the rim of the Grand Canyon, I leaned over to Yon and I go, you know the difference between the three and the one that we just did? Is everybody in that room is thinking like a business owner? And I think that's, if you're a real estate agent right now and you're watching this program, and if you don't have business plans, and if you're not watching this from a business perspective, you're gonna get gobbled up. And so you should, and that was the takeaway from the coaching and the mentoring. Sometimes these are hard conversations to have, right? They're not pleasant, right? They're, they're difficult conversations oh. to have. But if you're not 110% in on it, unfortunately, you might get left behind. And that, ten, by the way, um, we're at uh, 11.70%. I've done 10 transactions and above. So we're actually a little, I think it's a little bit better than 10%. 
is doing roughly 100% of the business or 90% or 80%. You say 11% is doing 90% of the business? I think, I think, I think, I think we as an association, uh, CAR, perform a lot better than the na national averages out there. But, but, but I think what will happen here, just, to, just back to my, my ADD kicked in, back to slide A and that peak there, that was the COVID years, right? Turkey can fly on the fly. Fly, fly, fly in, in, in the wind. So, you know, life was simple for us at that point, right? It, it, life as a country wasn't simple. And, and, estate, and everyone during peak COVID was bragging about it on social media. And that's what got us into trouble, 100%. Everybody, then every meeting I was in, every conversation. Is Put like, a listing online that sold within a few F, hours. What the F were people doing, right? And, and it, just, it just snowballed from there. But I want to go back to, to giving a shout out to the associations, the trifecta associations. I have a problem, frankly, with the requirement of having to join. I have a huge problem. I always had. Dude. That being said, they do wonderful stuff because we wouldn't have had a run up of 3,557 sales in 21 if CAR, NAR, and VAR, and particularly Virginia Realtors, didn't petition. Yeah, yeah. During the, COVID, that it was an essential industry. And if that didn't happen, yeah. And many states didn't happen. And, and if that didn't happen, the Virginia economy, in a lot of ways, would have absolutely tank. We learned this from who? The good doctor. Yeah, Lisa Sturdivant. Second, second, uh, GTB. chief economist of Bright. Second, uh, GTB behind. The second most impactful gross domestic product in the Commonwealth of Virginia behind government contracting. There you go. Well, military, government, yeah. all that, all yeah. that kind of great stuff. So, so here's what he's saying in the nitty gritty. What I, my, my, my job is, my, one of my skills is the succinct communication. This is what I'm learning from Keith huh? Smith today. <laughs> uh, put that chart back on screen, if you can, Judah Wickhauer. In 2021, which was peak COVID, it's, it's on screen now. In 2021, peak COVID, there was 3,557 transactions. In car. In car. So, so let's During the first nine months of the year. So that's every jurisdiction. Well, which I would imagine, is, is that, that's a record, right? In car history, I, I don't. I know. know you can't go past 2016, but the we probably can say with some confidence that that's a record number of transactions for the first nine months I, of the I, year. I would be a guess, but yes. For okay. the sake of a talk okay. show, we're going to say. So, it. because there was such sales movement momentum, you got a lot of Tom, Dix, and Harry jumping into the industry. And as the Tom, Dix, and Harry but, but, but jumped into the industry... That doesn't mean they're not good real I estate agents. Right? I didn't say that. I'm right. not throwing shade. I'm yeah. saying you got a lot of people jumping in because during peak COVID, people were post posting on social media that, oh my gosh, I sold this house in a couple hours thanks to a post on Facebook. That's what was happening during peak COVID. Well, a lot yeah. of people get in the industry. Now, three years later, that number is at a generation low. Sales for the first nine months of the year, units sold, a so generation na low. Nationally, and na that is compounded or coupled with the NAR settlement, with the news with the NAR settlement, the repositioning of listing agreements, and how you then, as a buyer's think, agent, I don't. I think it compounds it, Keith. It compounds it. It impacts it. It impacts it. It impacts it. it, impacts it. it compound it. means it doubles it. It impacts it. It impacts it for sure. But that's not. Compound doesn't mean it doubles. No, it impacts it. It influences it. The headlines influence. In my New York City school system. And that all is influenced or compounded or impacted by inflation. That is impacted by low sales, groceries out of control, fuel out of control. So, so I just looked at the number. 37% of all real estate agents are having trouble making their 37% of That's all real estate agents That's are nationwide. having a, trouble making their car payment. That's what you said. I just looked at my notes that I wrote down yeah. from the thing. Yeah, look. Uh, uh, I... I want to be clear. You know what the next question we I have to, to ask, clear. right? There's is really great agents that came in. We all know you. We all know during that. during that yeah. run up. He Matt Neese came in during that time. Hit, He's exactly doing a great right. job. Absolutely. Yeah. So he, it and and we have people on our team. But here's the here's the the um, the challenge here. You can't do business the same way. I, You've got to look at this as a business business end of it. And, you know what the next question is, and, and it's a and challenging one. I will tell one. you the people that focus. This top 10%, 11%, 8%, whatever you want to call it, when you sit down and have a conversation with them, you can tell very quickly they're business people, right? Um, and, and that's how you're going to have to look at stuff 
uh, look at this going going forward on it. Uh, but we, you know, these percentages are going to change because I really think, I really think, and that's just not me. I'm just regurgitating what I heard at these conferences. You know, there's a real world where we're going to be 40 to 60 percent below this 11, this 1,085. It, because look, there's going to be a couple things that's going to happen right now, right? Certain firms, and, and what we need to do is not specifically call. I know firms, that. Right? I know that. But certain firms are creating their own contracts, creating their own listing agreements, and this is all the stuff that we would take in deep dives into. It. You should see the but mailers that I'm getting at the house, marketing collateral, yeah. on how they're positioning compensation. Yeah. And their commissions. I'm not even. I'm not even talking about money. I'm talking about how you do business. Yeah. Right. Right. And so there are large national firms, publicly traded. Publicly traded. We're not that, naming any names. We're not naming any names. That are creating their own. They form. have a library of documents in an online portal where agents can access, and these forms so have. Here's, Here's the downside. Commission arrangements with their brokers no. that may be statewide that say anything over a certain threshold you keep as a recruiting mechanism. And I'm not, I'm not talking about money. I'm, I'm solely talking about how I do business, right? There are MLS firms out there that you don't have to belong to the trifecta. If there are firms out there that provide the documentation, you know, th th this trifecta is going to go away. There's just way too much money out there. Wait, there's like over two billion dollars worth of settlements that was, and it's going to keep on climbing. You know what? The next questions you got to ask, and these are hard questions and uncomfortable questions are. I don't have to ask the uncomfortable questions if we don't have to. Yeah, you can ask them. I, just, I don't have to ask I the uncomfortable not, questions. Yeah, ask, ask an uncomfortable question. I may not answer it, but I may be sipping my coffee instead. You don't have to ask. I don't have to ask the uncomfortable questions. You ask whatever you want, Jerry. I'm I'm a big boy. What happens to the associations if the membership drops of this magnitude, and you're no that longer forced? You're no longer forced to be me uh, members of the trilogies. The trifecta. The trifecta. Um, the next question is, is: What happens to question. what happens to the real estate tied to the associations if the associations owns owes said real estate owns real estate tied to their association, and there's still a significant portion of debt service due on said real estate and membership drops at the same time, that debt service is outstanding. So we're not going to talk any specifics. We'll talk more globally, more macro. Um, you are going to start seeing, and it's already happening, associations, in my opinion, shift away from their current business model, because they're doing it. Yeah, the, the largest association in the United States is the California Association. We had a presentation from their CEO about this event I was at. And he started it off using this language, and words matter, right? He goes, we've now changed our language from calling, and air quote, our members to partners. And they're starting to revamp how they're conducting business to focus more on coaching, education, um, you know, advocacy. That's what you, I think that's what you're going to start seeing. These Charity, days. philanthropy. You're going to see this, I think, this change. By the way, Jerry, I could be a thousand percent wrong. No, I don't think you're a thousand percent wrong, dude. I think you've been, but uh, I'm, I'm, I've been in, <laughs> you've been ahead of this for years. I've been, I've been in enough. Dude, I think you're a hundred percent right. <laughs> I've been in enough rooms. You know, my rule is um, if I think I'm the smartest person. Leave the room. Leave the room. So I purposely always try to put myself in a room with people that are way smarter than me. Okay, see you later. <laughs> but do, but, do but, you want to touch on... Chamber of Commerce just put their building up for sale. Yeah. look, I, Very I, I, similar I, scenario. Yeah, I'm not going to take a dive into the... You don't want to touch that one? Into, no, no. I just okay. don't want to take a dive into the local. Because you know, I, I just don't want to cross any lines here. I understand. But I, I will tell you, macro, you know, each association right now should be, and they are, I'm sure, looking hard on what their new value proposition is. And trimming overhead. What their, well, that their business plan is, how they're going to move forward. I'm confident 
that that's happening. I'm not in the room, but I'm confident that's happening locally. I'm, I'm confident of that. But things are going to change, guys. We, we, it is going to be a very... And what we're talking about right now, and I'm going to get myself into a lot of trouble. I think we're talking, done a very good job here. What we're talking about right now is going to be easy. Excuse me. It's going to be make the commission conversation... Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah. Right? Th- that's really the low bar of this whole... Yeah. Th- this that whole, was the first inning. Th- uh, 100%. Th- this path mm. that we're going on is going to be a little long. The economy is going to kind of expe- expedite it, without a doubt. I, I, I can tell you, I think next year's sales volume is not going to be much greater than this I, year's, yeah. if not a, a wee bit less, right? And I'm not trying to brag, but we're, we're having the best year ever. Um, but, you know, if you... If, if you Focus on the business, focus on growing your business, and, and, and all that. You're going to do great. This is a great, and up your level of professionalism. Um, there's a Buffini certifi- professional certification that we're requiring all our people at Yes Realty Partners to take. It's a five-month uh, certification to be, to, to be with a real pro. The folks that focus on professionalism and grow in their level of professionalism, and that's where associations can help, Right? They get into this weird thing in, in this business, right? Because these associations don't really want to cross what the brokers are doing. It's this weird, which I can never understand, relationship in it. So there's that slippery slope that they have to figure out a way to grow. Now, certain, like for instance, Richmond's association is owned by brokers. It's not owned by members. We're owned by members. Huge difference. Huge, very different conversation to have. They're going to be a wee bit more nimble than us because there's a, there's a smaller pool of people that are making a decision versus what we do. But look, I, the, I, I am Ann Burroughs, Josh White's about ready to take on the presidency. My hat's off to these guys. This is tough stuff. This is really hard stuff. Uh, Abby Tamman, who's the, the CEO or the executive director in man, I'm glad I'm not on that board. And I wouldn't put my hat in the ring to get on that board. This is going to be a lot of hard work for the next 12 to 24 months to figure out what the long-term survivability and what it's going to look like on the back end. Because it's coming, folks. If you think it's not, all you got to do is remember, oh, we were going to win a case. And we didn't. Oh, we were going to settle, and we this going to be weren't going to settle, and we settled. This roll, this 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 ship is rolling. There you go. That was excellent. I'm going to sip my coffee. That was absolutely fantastic. 1102. Very curious to see how it impacts a lot of things. I'm very curious to see how it impacts a, a brick and mortar headquarters for an association that's dropping membership. So I got I'm to very curious to see how it impacts a recently launched and newly minted foundation. Very curious to see how that is impacted with this. I don't think it will impact that. I mean, there's there's overhead associated with the foundation. Yeah, but but that but, overhead is covered by what? We'll bring we'll bring in Dave Norris to answer Please. to answer that yeah. answer that question because I'm not on the board and that's not fair. There. But I will tell you, um, it is not. Even though it's called CAR, it is seeking funds from other locations. So it's not. It's partially funded by CAR, but not 100. percent but I, I, that's a, a so way different beyond, topic. Different topic. Different. Well, show. I'm just way above my pay grade. Different on show. That. Uh, different somebody, show. somebody needs to answer that. I want to ask you I this will, question. Will, no, let me get this out. Yeah. If you don't mind, I will tell you all this conversation we're having right now. I would say the top 15 percent will not impact it. Well, no. If if anything, if you're in the top 15 percent. 2025 could be even better for you because the competition in the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six transaction is going to vanish. And then there's an opportunity for the top 15% to get more market share. So whoever's watching, whatever real estate agent might be. You want me to highlight some of them? Go ahead. Let me ask the question. Sure. Uh, Whoever's watching this, in the last 12 to 24 months, have transactions gotten more complicated or easier? Well, obviously more complicated. But complicated in a level that I've never seen in, in 40 years of doing this. Even a simple cash transaction can go squirrely. 
It's why I think we're in a buyer's market, and we haven't looked at that yet. We'll take a look at what we're... Depends on the area. Depends on the area. Depends on where it's at. But what's happening right now, buyers do not... You know, back in the unicorn years, if it had four walls and a roof, somebody bought it. Even if it wasn't standing, it was all on the ground, somebody bought it. Right now, it's got to be in the right location. It's got to be priced right. The right features. Got to... Got to be in the right condition. If that's if it's got an old roof, a new HVA system, I don't care if it's two hundred thousand or twenty million bucks. The buyer's just going to walk away from it. They are, they are not. We are not seeing a ton, at least from my perspective, a ton of multiple offers in this craziness. And thank God, we're back to a normal balanced, balanced yeah. market where it takes pros. The buyers are moving, are, are getting this market way more than the sellers. The sellers take a little bit longer usually to get into it. But now we're back into home inspections, right? You know, uh, we're, we're not doing multiple offers. No escalators. No escalation. Look, there may be a few cases out there. But back in the unicorn years, it was every freaking transaction. You're seeing a lot of notifications because I get them um, with price I, modifications. So I'm going to give you a new stat that I learned out there. It was very interesting. What month is this? This is September. In August, there was the highest contract cancellation in the history of NAR keeping numbers. It was 60,000 nationwide transactions were done. Actually, I take that back. It was the second, the second highest. The first highest was, was the first month of COVID when it hit March or whatever it was. There were 62,000, 65,000 nationwide. Last month in August, this is, it, is it, it was August, was um, around 60,000. So they had 60,000 contract trans. Tra now that number's dropping drastically as, as it goes. But that, and the, the, the one in, and it's very interesting, the one in the first month of COVID made sense, right? People were freaking out on it. They were getting out of contracts. You know, it was, was that the second highest was when rates doubled. There was like a roughly 60,000, 50 something thousand. The average is about 30, plus or minus, year wide. So we had this last month in August spike for no reason at all. Interest rates were, were kind of stabilizing, coming down. So why the hell was that? People were scared. And that's the reason why they were getting out of, out of contracts. So I'm telling you, this well, it's is also peak uh, media attention for the NAR settlement. I don't think NAR settlement had a damn thing to do with it. it, we, it had, we were inundated with that. I, I get that, but this was more of a fear. I, I really fear of what? That's the whole point. Fear of what? That's the whole point. Fear of where the rates could go after the election. Fear of what? Ukraine. Fear of Gaza. Fear of Israel. Fear of credit card debt. I mean, fear of what? That's exactly the point. That's the point. There was no rationale. That's what I'm there saying. There was no rational reason. So but it was happened. the fear not the inundation of the media cycle? Oh, I'm sure media. it's all about media, for yeah. sure. The what is, is a multiple thing. I attribute it to what I said. Well, it's a multiple things put together. The point is there was no real reason, economic reason, for that other than fear. Everything you've said, you've been, you're fantastic. Absolutely fantastic today. You're crushing it. You're crushing it. You got... The Coffee. professionals, professionals watching you right here. The pros, pros. You're crushing it today. There's one thing I want to push back. The only thing I want to push back on. We are 53 minutes into the show. And you said in 2015, sales numbers, units sold. 2016. Or excuse me. I'll, I'll, thank you for correcting me. In 2025, next year, next year, 2025, units sold, you said, could be the same or less. I think so, yeah. That's the only thing I want to push back on you on. No, and I hope you're right. I see. I disagree on that. No, I no. disagree on that. I, I want them to be more. Of course you do. I don't think they will be. I want to hear your thesis on that. And I'll give you my thesis on why I think that's not the case. You go first. Yeah, so I... I um, that's the only thing I have to agree with you on the entire yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I appreciate that. So... The simple reason for it is I don't think inventory is going to grow. Well, that, obviously, if you can't, have, you can't sell units if you don't think inventory is going to grow. Why do you not think inventory is going to grow? That's the whole basis of your thesis, that units are, we're not going to have as many units sold next year. Correct. So, 
again, I just don't think we're going to have the inventory. But why? Because we're not building enough okay. to bring in. Everybody thinks that that we hit 5.5 or 5.7. That's going to be part of my argument. Go ahead. And, and I'll tell you, to, 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 to side with your argument, one of the presentations I had was from every one of the CEOs of the top four national builders who all said, when you hit between 5.5 five and 5.7 to 5, inventory is going to jump. Yeah. My gut's telling me no, and okay. I don't really have a good reason behind it. I just don't think it's going to grow. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think it's going to grow. I think it's going to stay a little bit of flat. I think it's going to, if you don't mind putting on um, the, slide. the slide again, take a look at 18, 19, and 20. Okay. See how we were bouncing around 3,000? Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll adjust my opinion a little bit. We might jump up to about 3,000. 3,000 is a massive jump, Smith. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking an 800 unit jump. Yeah, but we're not, we're not going to get. A, was that a 40% increase? But we're not going to get to 3,557. No, 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 no. 3,557 yeah, yeah. is never yeah. going to happen again in yeah, car I, history. I still. I still, 3557 will yeah. never happen again. 2021 units sold will never happen again in car history. So if I, so you're probably right. I'm probably wrong. But I, I, just, I just think it's going to be somewhere between this and maybe 3,000. But if you take a look at 18, 19, 20, and 22, they're all hovering around 3,000 for the first nine months. If you get so to you're, three, thinking, you're thinking we're going to go up to 3,000. I think 2018, 2019, 2020 is a good indication of I where 2025 right. is going to be. I hope you're right. I really In do. 2025, you're going to see rates in the mid-low fives. And if we see rates in the mid to low fives, the individuals, the families, the households that secured the 2.5% or the 3% are going to do the scales of justice. Do I give up my low payment and my 2.5%, my 3% rate? And you're making or do I capitalize on the hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity I have and finally trade up to a house that better suits our needs? And you're making the exact argument these four CEOs make. Uh, that's going to happen. And when, when you have these large national builders. And if the agents, and I think, I, I hope brokers are saying this. I hope brokers are saying this to their, and brokers should be playing this episode of Real Talk for their agents. If brokers are saying to their team members, you need to sustain and persevere into the second quarter of next year, and then you will see momentum up. So what I don't know. That's what the, should be the mission that the message that should be passed on to agents. I don't know. because Sustain I till next year. I don't know because I don't think I, I, I have that information. I would love to know what the agent count was in 2016. I don't know. That. Yeah, I, I, somebody has the ability to do what that. We wanted, what we should ask ourselves is this. What was the interest rate on a 30 fixed with good credit in 2019? 2019? Yeah. That's what we should have. something, if I remember, okay. I remember So correctly. that 2019 is my prediction of what you're going to see. Yeah. 2020 is an anomaly because 2020 was effed so because of COVID. So if you're 2019, then we're going to jump from 2254 up to 3,000. Yeah. Okay. And that's a massive jump. I, I, that's a significant I, I, jump. I, no. I'm going to say you're right. I just, my gut's telling me. We'll find out, obviously. That's a 37, 38% jump. That is massive. Uh, I don't, okay. I would have to do the math. I'm doing the math right now. 2254 times 1.37 gives you 3,087 units. That's a 37, 36.5% jump. If we get a 36.5% jump through the first nine months of the year of next year, people will be able to sustain their livelihood. If I'm a broker and a team leader, I'm saying to my associates, my colleagues, figure out a way to persevere until Q2 next year. Well, in essence, that's what I was talking about up until this, up until this point. This is where the professionalism pays off and, and going ahead and, and knowing how to do the, the business of it and the transaction of it. Look, I, I think what's gonna happen is you're actually, you may be right, we might hit 3,000 by, by this time next, next year. The pool of agents is going to be less, right? Uh, so the, the pool of agents is definitely going to be less. Yeah, so the percentages are going to change a little bit. And the more. ones that stay around are going to get more slice of the pie. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, we shall see because when, as long as you'll have me this time next oh, year, we'll, uh, we'll have a, 
the we'll, data. We'll run, we'll run the numbers. Yeah. And we'll find out who, who's right. Um, I almost was going to say, well, you want to bet a bottle of booze on, but I'm getting tired. That's of, too far of a bet. I'm getting too tired of losing to you. Too so. long of a bet. Nine, <laughs> I'm nine and two on, soon to be nine and two on prop bets after you I win are, this prop bet with Judah Wickhauer in the Lewis Mountain neighborhood. That's going to uh, take me to nine and two on prop bets here. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm we got smarter. a prop bet on units uh, that come on uh, the market uh, between now and close of business 2024. Um, no. The over under is at nine. Judah's got three units. Nine's a push. No one wins. Eight and under. I win. Ten and over. Judah wins. He's so got I'm, three so far. So I'm a smarter guy. I've only been to Vegas once, but when I lost a couple of hands at at blackjack, you didn't go back to the table. I decided. <laughs> I decided to go watch Tom Jones. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And have a martini. I said, you know what? I got a better chance with Tom Jones and a martini. There you which go. actually was probably the coolest show I've ever seen. Which makes you a smart man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, it makes well, you a smart I man. I told Yona the other day, I go, yeah, because I, 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 we were, as we were driving, uh, well, we'll end, we'll end on this. Um, have you ever been out to the South? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I'll, I'll preface. I, as a gambling man, no, I've no, been... I'm to Las Vegas, I've been to Tahoe, I've been to New Orleans. Very much enjoy casino time. Well, this was the first time. Black Jack guy. You know the best odds in a casino? Judah, do you know where the best odds? You have a three shot set up? Yeah. Do you know where your best odds are at a casino? You're at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> if you can count cards, you can, oh, yeah, you can, you can shift, you can shift yeah, yeah. the odds in blackjack, but if you yeah. can't do that, the best odds in a casino, just for an average Joe or an average Sally, where is it? Mm, well, let's see. It's the pass line on the craps table. The pass line at the craps table. You mm. play the pass line on the craps table. No, you're mm. not going to get the uh, excitement and the adrenaline and the, uh, that little rush you get playing the pass line on the craps table. Jon Snow, exactly right. The pass so, line on the craps table. So when we were... So this, this will sound... Now, if you can count some cards, it's blackjack. But you're looking at a six-deck shoot, seven-deck shoot, eight-deck shoot, depending on the casino you go to. Hey, honey, there's a reason I use a spreadsheet. I got it. <laughs> I can't I count. It. It's a pretty simple reason if you got that right there. So look pretty, at that. Look what we got. Inside it, out, too. It's a pretty... Uh, it looks like the Real Talk with Keith Smith center, uh, center Inside screen out, drop. too. Look at that. Uh, oh, we got a pretty California Redwoods. That's nah. pretty. Really? The viewers and listeners can't see that, <laughs> <laughs> the viewers and listeners can't see. But now going to Smith finally lost it. Jon Snow is exactly right with I, craps. This will sound a little bit uh, entitled, but when I was in the Marine Corps, I visited every European city multiple times from Moscow to London, multiple times. Okay. I've never been to the middle of the country. It's the first time I've ever been. To Phoenix. I've been to the East Coast and the West Coast. And my God, when we drove from Phoenix to Santa Fe through the... It blew my mind, you know, in 45-minute car drive, the total change of terrain going from desert to, to, to beautiful uh, uh, evergreens. It just, it was, my, I was driving, my mouth was dropping how gorgeous it was out there. And I'll tell you, I fell in love with Santa Fe. I, hands down, I'm, if I could pack up my trash and go, I'd be in Santa Fe in a heartbeat. Loved it, absolutely loved it. Interesting stat about Santa Fe. Do you want to know what the average age of people in the city of Santa Fe is? Because I'm an idiot. What's that? And my brain won't shut off, and I'm walking around looking, going, how come I don't see any young people? 52. Average age is 52. Why, and you attribute that to the cost? Retiree, no, retirees are just going there because it's, you know, they, 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 this is that sunbelt kind of thing, and they leave when it gets cold. Hiked up to 10,000 feet. It was absolutely gorgeous looking at all the, um, I'll send pictures over the weekend of all the thing. My uh, Division I athlete daughter makes me go on these hikes and drags me up on it. So anyway, thank you. This was, was awesome. So fun. So uh, fun. It's 11.18. My, yeah. past my time. Uh, we will see uh, next, uh, next Friday. I've, I've got Woody coming in. I'm going to see if I can get Dave or somebody else to join us to, to go ahead and talk a little bit more. But uh, Think about your business as a business if you're a real estate agent, and you do great. Keith Smith, Judah Wickhauer, Jerry Miller. Real Talk with Keith Smith online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Show archived at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. Look at the businesses on the partners tab either. on realtalkwithkeithsmith.com, <laughs> and you'll see the trusted advisors in the game we call real estate. Please. Keith Smith, we are lucky to have him oh, stop. in the Central Virginia community. The I Love Seville show up at 1230. So long, everybody.
Thanks, guys. The